uh, former Commissioner Emeritus Robert Duque Valderrama, who will be the first person to welcome everybody for tonight's workshop. Uh, Commissioner Duque. Have you can unmute yourself, please. Okay, it's unmuted now. All right, first Great. of all, uh, Duque Valderrama, I've been a port commissioner for 16 years. Uh, I want to thank Commissioner Naranjo, Naranjo for inviting me to come in and uh, say a few comments. I, as I in, indicated, I've been a lifetime resident. I grew up in Old Town National City. And when I grew up in Old Town, uh, Pepper Park or the 24th Street area is where me and all my friends used to hang out. As a young kid, we used to ride our bikes down there. In high school, we used to go down there and socialize and uh, do a little bit of partying. And even to this day, even as I'm retired, me and my wife go there at least once a week uh, to go sit there and, and get some, the the breeze coming in off the off the bay. So I've got a lot of uh, I spent a lot of time at Pepper Park. Um, as I indicated, uh, being a lifetime resident, uh, Pepper Park has had many great events down there. Uh, we've had a mariachi fest. We've had, you know, thousands of people show up and uh, we're kind of limited as far as what we can do at the park because of the size. So this is an opportunity for the uh, Nash City community to provide their input as far as what they would like to see with a new balance plan. Uh, you know, there's a lot of great ideas out there. Uh, you know, there's talking about expanding the park. There's talking about putting in a uh, community building. One of the things that I've, a pet peeve of mine is that when, when I was in high school and we wanted to go to the Sweetheart's Ball of the Prom, we always had to do something like that in, in, in San Diego. This, uh, if we increase the capacity, what the building is there, we, we could potentially have functions like that at Pepper Park. But, you know, this whole event this evening is giving the community an opportunity to come in and provide their input of what they want to see as far as moving forward. So I really want to thank Commissioner Narajo for in, uh, allowing me to say a few comments uh, regarding the, the, the process that's going to be utilized. And I want to thank everybody that's taking the time to come out and speak, to, who's going to speak in the breakouts today. So with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Commissioner Narajo. And thank you once again, Sandy, for inviting me. Thank you, Emeritus Commissioner Dukey. And um, before I go into my comments, I want to just say this real clear. It was not our intention to have a limit. We want we wanted this workshop to be open for everyone to join. So I, you know, I know this is recorded and we're going to post this. My apologies that there are folks that are, aren't able to get in. And also uh, this will be posted on our website and we will make sure this is a lesson learned uh, what we need to do on our end to make sure that everyone can join. So good evening, everyone. And again, um, Commissioner Emeritus Duki Balderrama, it's great to be presenting you this evening. I really have to say you left some pretty big shoes to fill in on the board, but I assure you I remain as committed as ever and will work as hard to represent National City on the board of Port Commissioners, especially when it comes to increasing public access to the waterfront in National City, a topic of interest that I share passionately with Commissioner Emeritus Duki. I want to see the National City Balance Plan certified so that we can get working on this project. It's going to expand Pepper Park, giving our children more room to play and our community to breathe, giving National City residents and visitors more public spaces to commune and to enjoy our beautiful bay so that the people we attract can in turn patronize our local business and economy. It will open up the area and provide environmental and aesthetic benefits to a part of San Diego that has at times been made to neglect these concerns as a result of the social inequalities, racial divisions, and economic inequities manifested in large part from the community being excluded from the decision-making process. We are part of a larger a, a chance to correct these egregious accidents and sometimes deliberate policies which is precisely why public outreach is an integral component of this process and has included small stakeholder working sessions, public meetings and individual meetings with interested parties. Tonight is another step in the long, longer arc of this journey, giving you the public, the community, a chance to share your vision, feedback and potential features that you want to see included at Pepper Park, aimed at helping us establish a larger vision. 
The park will be expanded by an additional two and a half acres as part of this project. It is a modest number, but one with so much potential. On behalf of the Board of Court Commissioners, thank you for participating tonight. We welcome all of your ideas and input and appreciate them. Now, I will be turning it over to Jamie Lebrec, Director at Sequan Cultural Center, and Ana Gloria Rodriguez, Cultural Coordinator and Instructor for a Land Dedication Ceremony. Jamie and Ana. Jamie, if you can unmute yourself. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay. Well, thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Janice, for allowing me to be here to partake in this meeting tonight. I think what you all are doing is wonderful. Before I start, I'd like to offer a little bit of tobacco for gratitude and thanks for today. The tobacco was the first plant that came from the creator's heart. And when you gave it to us, you gave it to us whenever we're sharing or receiving to always be grateful for today and always being grateful to meet new people, to bring resolution to issues or most important to bring to fruition great ideas. And I think that's what's happening tonight. I'm also gonna offer a little bit of the sage plant right here. And this provides us the transport of our prayers and our ideas to the heavens above. The smoke will carry all our wishes and, and our efforts to the creator as we ask for guidance. Always like to do things and prayers like that. Well, how could Chawai in your Mapi'i, Jamie Winichi Hisi Kwamu Kapai, how could relatives and welcome to our homelands. My name is Jamie, I'm with the Sequan Band of the Kumian Nation. And I'm here to give you gratitude and thanks for acknowledging that this meeting is taking place in our homelands. The reason why, because it allows me and the Kumian people to welcome you into our homes. I think what you're doing with confidence and comfort, knowing that you can bring changes on that is very important and we acknowledge you and we see you for these efforts. Our Kumiat lands, a little bit about us, extend from the ocean to the desert, 75 miles north of the border and also 75 miles south of the border. There's 12 bands of the Kumiat people that reside on this side, but I also like to include my family. There's four bands of the Kumiat nation. There's Nahi, Nequa, Maparhau and La Huerta. And I just wanna bring them into this, into this um, dialogue too. I wanna to share a little story about us on how we got the ability to use our language and our songs and to be able to philosophy. A, a man one time from the mountains was sent to the ocean by his people. And he was sent down there to ask the creator, my God, for knowledge. So when he got to the ocean, he created himself into the foam and he floated out to the middle of the ocean and he asked the creator for this knowledge. The creator sent him back home with the instructions to tell his people to build him a large awa, which is a home, and that he was going to come in three days. So he went back to the, to the mountain where his home was and he instructed the people to build a large awa. In three days, the creator came, but he came in the form of a snake. From what I heard, it was miles and miles long. So he got to the home and he crawled, starts crawling into this home and he kept coming and he kept coming and the people got scared. So they hit it with fire, al -Katul. And when they did this, the snake unraveled. And when it did this, it exploded. It exploded into the skies above the people. Some of the people swallowed the flesh and that's how we got our language. Some of them swallowed our songs. That's how we got our songs. And some of them swallowed the philosophy and the knowledge to be able to take care of the waters, take care of the skies, to take care of the plants and know which plants are used for medicinal use, for diet use and tool use. But most important, the instructions of the creator was to share this knowledge. You see, he came with more than just enough for that village. When he exploded, the knowledge landed everywhere. That's why there's mountains of repositories and other indigenous people with different dialects, but the same ability to communicate. And I wanted to share that because the instructions was to share this knowledge, to share what we knew from different areas. And that's why I see this meeting today, because we both have the desire to protect our environment. Mother Earth is just that, she's our mother. 
Father Sky is just that. He's our father. So be a part of this meeting today and to not just acknowledge that you acknowledge as being our homeland, but to acknowledge the hard work that you're all putting together. A hundred people are in on this meeting. That is important. And it's amazing that all of you are out there trying to protect these waters and the air so your children can grow up in a clean environment, so your elders can enjoy the parklands and not have to worry about the quality of the air to prevent industrial movement and growth from choking off our backyards, preventing parks from being built. Very important pieces when it comes to raising a family, a family where we can enjoy and prosperity, not just economically, but emotionally and spiritually too. I can't wait for our next meeting. I can't wait to meet you all in person one day so we can share in collaboration to find resolution of issues that only just impact your community, but our community too. We all want the same thing, just an opportunity to raise a family in a clean environment, protecting our climate, bringing cleaner waters to our community and cleaner air. So in that way, I give you many thanks and my gratitude and acknowledgement to all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jamie. Those were beautiful words and we appreciate you being here tonight. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And it is now uh, my pleasure and honor to also introduce um, Honorable Mayor from National City, Mayor Alejandra Sotelo uh, Solis, who will give some uh, few additional remarks for everybody uh, tonight. Uh, Mayor, thank you for being here. All right, buenas tardes, everyone. What a beautiful Muy bien, buenas welcome, tardes. Mayor, Good afternoon. Uh, Jamie, um, and to uh, Commissioner Naranjo, uh, amazing turnout. Uh, to pass uh, Commissioner Valderrama, it's always great to hear, you know, the and see the building stones with which we are um, making and building our paths and continuing to grow as the community. Uh, 100 people have been and put on this um, um, Zoom. And the reason I'm giving my uh, remarks now, I feel that it's important to have a community member um, give their perspective and share their um, um, ideas. So I am going to exit and give up my virtual seat uh, to a community member so that they can participate. And it's a really important that we hear your perspective, that we see what the future of Pepper Park really can be. Think big, think bold, think about the future, the connectivity to the water, uh, the indigenous, uh, the transportation corridors, our hubs, really think big, think about water, you know, the everything that we have uh, you know, uh, all dreamed of, why not us? It's time, es hora, this is well-deserved and you, my community, have earned it. So dream big and the port's gonna spend the money. So, you know, dream even bigger, go lobster, go uh, surf and turf. Um, but uh, I, I just, again, wanna thank you all for being here. Very excited. And again, to uh, Joe uh, Stuyvesant, I want to say hola, uh, thank you again for leading the charge at the port and to all of the staff. Let's keep going because we're going to have an amazing event. So I will be giving up my seat. And if there's any other staff who is open to giving up their seat, please feel free to do so. Thank you again so much. Have a great meeting. Thank you, Mary. We appreciate it. And I'd like to also call on Ana Rodriguez. Um, you were also going to follow up, Jamie. Um, you have a couple, uh, some additional words for everybody here tonight. Okay. Oh, thank you. Well, I'll cut the pressure on your mother and she and I feel the cook from the way my team fee. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for the invitation to be part of this meeting. I just want to say, um, and thank you for all these people who really cares about, you know, to have a better world for our kids and our, for our families. Uh, and then, um, like Jamie was saying, you know, this is, uh, you know, this is our homeland. This is a holy land for our Kumiai nation. So we really um, would like to be involved too with the planning because we are here to protect our ancestors. And everything you guys do, any development you guys do in the city, it will affect us. It will affect our spirits, our um, 
um, our people, you know, every time you guys remove soil, that's our ancestors over here. According to creation story, we're here since time immemorial. So it's very important for us to be involved with any developments in the city because we need to protect our people, our uh, culture, our ancestors. And, and then uh, I'm just want to thank you for the opportunity for being participating in this meeting. And yeah, Johan, thank you. Thank you, Anna. We appreciate you too. Thank you. Great. Well, I am. I'm really happy, and I'm honored to have, have provided the opportunity for for those welcoming remarks. Um, for those, so thank you, thank you. We are going to um, move ahead with our presentation, and hopefully, we can have some really great engagement and conversations once we go into our breakout rooms. So I will go ahead and share my screen again, so we can um, move on and continue this great conversation. Thank you, Anna, Jamie, Mayor, and Commissioners. We appreciate it. So. What we're about to do, we just want to do a quick poll for those who are joining us tonight. We're going to launch a short, a quick little question here for you. And we would like to know what your relationship with National City is. And you can select more than one answer. You can select that you're a resident, if you're a business owner, if you're employed, if you're just a visitor tonight, or other. And so Jesse and our team will uh, launch the survey and we'll give you about 20 seconds to select your answers. So thank you so much. I'm seeing the answers come in on the fly right now. I'm glad to see that it's working. We'll give it another 10 seconds, Jesse, before we, we close it. We have residents, business owners. We'll, we'll close the poll in a few moments and we'll also share it with everybody. Thank you for those who quickly participated. Um, as you can see here, we have um, a, a good um, good division. We have residents, um, we have business owners, um, people who are employed within the city and lots of others. So again, thank you so much for participating in this poll. So what I will now do is I'm going to provide a brief overview of the history of how we have you know, arrived at this, um, at this destination tonight's workshop. And so part of that is the, a little bit of the history. So in 2016, the port and the city of National City held public design charrettes to discuss a rebalance of land uses for the maritime, commercial, and the public uses near Pepper Park, as well as Pier 32. The resulting land use reconfiguration is what we commonly refer to as the balance plan. The balance plan uh, contemplates and considers a reconfiguration of all the maritime, commercial, and the public park uses. One of the highlights of the balance plan was that it included a 2.5 acre expansion to the existing Pepper Park that is approximately five acres. And with that, and it, uh, it also included the possibilities and the opportunity to reconfigure the existing Pepper Park where necessary. Part of the overarching goals for this Pepper Park expansion study is to explore park features and recreation opportunities that will help transform Pepper Park into a resource, into a park that first and foremost, national city residents will be able to enjoy and cherish as well as visitors and, and our neighbors in San Diego National City. This process is about engaging with the community and our stakeholders in a collaborative format so that we can effectively and successfully design the future of Pepper Park. Part of this process is to identify park features and amenities and big ideas that can leverage the waterfront. Uh, that way, so that we can also try to balance the priorities, not only the port, the region, and the local national city community needs. And at this moment, I'd like to introduce uh, Mike Singleton, who is the principal at uh, charge from K2A. He will spend the next min a couple of minutes explaining the existing conditions of Pepper Park so that we can all start kind of thinking about exactly uh, what is possible uh, with, and what the spaces that, uh, that we can and what we can do with those spaces. Uh, so Mike, uh, thank you so much for um, joining us today. And 
we'll let you get started on this. Thank you, Jacob. Uh, what we're going to be asking you a lot about tonight is what would you like to do in the park? But it's also good for you to understand a little bit about Pepper Park. A lot of you probably know it very well. You've used it a lot. Uh, but in context from a planning standpoint of what's available or what we call what's at play. So those areas that are in red are probably things that based on their overall investment and condition are likely to stay in those locations. The orange area that you're seeing on the screen are really areas that um, are great opportunities to infill new amenities that could go in those areas. And then the park expansion area is the 2.5 acres of expansion. A lot of it comes from the Pasha side of where they're currently doing the car importing. Some of it goes across the top of the uh, band of the park. And then there's also an area that right now is parking lot that's fronts on the marina that is part of Pepper Park in terms of the changes that can occur. So uh, next slide. What we'd like to do is we, we call it local context. It's really important to understand what a park is about and how people are using it. And uh, the way we try to explain that is that there's opportunities, there's constraints, assets, and limitations that we need to take into account. And slides we'll go through will hit on some of the major elements that we see in the park. Next. So one of the things that I think is very interesting that I've learned uh, um, working on this park area and a lot of national city work over the last uh, 20 years is that uh, there's not many places where you get like close to a 270 degree view. Now, most of you are aware of the view of the marina, uh, the view of Sweetwater River Channel and the bay, but also if you get up a little bit higher, it doesn't take a lot of height to get to, but you can see all the way to downtown San Diego and the Coronado Bridge and a lot of Coronado. So in essence, you have a 270 degree view that is potentially uh, an opportunity here at the site. Uh, the proximity of this water edge is a great opportunity to, um, because of its relatively calm and protected and clear nature of the water that's in that area. There's a lot between the uh, Pier 32 and the Aquatic Center that set the stage for a little bit of design excellence that occurs in these areas. There's quite a number of areas for um, additional art that could occur uh, throughout the park. There's interpretive topics that are great between history and culture and the importing business, all those types of things uh, in this area would be great to have interpretive top topics that could be used. The roundabout itself, the street is not gonna come in the same location as it currently uh, exists. So the roundabout uh, area can be repurposed for a public space. Then um, there's also the ability to capture water on site from stormwater that can have a beneficial use and make sure that uh, there's improved water quality that does eventually find its way into the bay. There is some discussion on a uh, water shuttle that could actually use the piers, um, the, the dock itself at the boat launch ramp or modify the fishing pier in some manner. And there's certainly a, a lot of sun that's out in this area. So there's always wind and solar uh, options on the site. So there's a great deal of opportunities that we are, are working with on this site. So next slide. Now the constraints, again, I went over some of those, but some that, that need a little bit more clarification. The boat launch ramp will remain as will the boat launch parking areas. Those need to remain in, in those basic locations. The aquatic center is a high investment facility in good shape. That's not gonna move. And even the restrooms are in pretty good shapes and the picnic area directly adjacent to it. The fishing pier itself is a great asset that should remain in those sites. And then all around the edge of the site itself is pretty much a walking edge that gets you to the water's edge and that's gonna remain as well. Uh, so next slide. And then some of the assets. Uh, again, I mentioned that the restroom facility is in pretty good shape. The playground is in pretty good condition. There's certainly uh, the need to diversify the age uh, capabilities of that playground itself. The fishing pier and viewing area are also great assets. There's quite a number of mature and healthy trees in the park. So we wanna be careful not to uh, place things that's going to remove a lot of those larger trees that are great for shade. The aquatic center building itself, there could be probably more programming occurring with this and more activities that might uh, involve more of the public. And the boat launch and boat parking themselves again are assets. Next slide. Now limitations, we don't always like to talk about limitations. They're just things that are, are um, um, point out to us some things that we may want to make sure we address. Certainly access to the water is a great opportunity, um, but if that access might be a little bit too close to the docking of the Pasha's large ships, we have to be a little bit con uh, con concerned about 
how that's going to function. So we do want the opportunity potentially of allowing people to dip their feet in the water. There's some options that could occur there, but at least the importance of that whole water edge is, is very critical. The wind currents do kind of protect a fair amount of the site. There's certainly some winds that come across the site at different times, but we have to take into account um, there's usually a breeze all the time down here at the waterfront, which is a great asset, especially in the heat of the summer, but in a colder air, uh, colder, windy weather time, it's, it may not be considered the same asset. Uh, the wildlife refuge across and the Sweetwater River itself are things that must be protected. There must, uh, must include priorities to make sure that those are uh, kept intact. So there's a great number of things that we are all working with here. If you want to go on the next slide. So uh, a lot of people ask questions about, you know, we really can't get down. It's not real obvious or perceptually uh, well connected to the rest of the city. So there are a number of things that National City has been working on that I wanted to bring to everyone's attention. It's not really the focus tonight, but as you ask about how this park can be used, and uh, some people will also potentially ask about how can you access it better. There is a, uh, a number of grants that the city has one recently. One is, is a neighborhood electric vehicle shuttle system that will, uh, that money has been um, promised from the state of California to run it for a three year uh, period. So um, right now it's mainly so, uh, focused on the 8th street trolley station, but it will potentially can be expanded down to Pepper Park. The home front to waterfront study itself identified a number of improvements, including how to better um, provide a walking surface and bike lanes that come under um, from National City Boulevard to the um, Bayview uh, waterfront. Um, 19th Street improvements is another location that's going to have some additional improvements. Bayshore bikeways being expanded in the area that goes on a north-south basis. And as, as I mentioned before, our water taxi study is potentially going to be commissioned to, um, and we're looking at federal grants to maybe help fund that particular program. Those grants went in just last week. There's also a request to do a feasibility study on a pedestrian bridge that connects 24th Street over to uh, the empty lots that are on the west side of I-5, um, as well as how it connects into Bayshore Bikeway. So there's a, a great number of things at the park. There's also a great number of things of how to improve access to the park as well that we've been all working on. So with that, I'll turn it back to you, Jacob. Thank you so much, Mike. We appreciate the background. One more slide regarding history and background. Um, one of the main things that we wanted to communicate to the attendees here and tonight's workshop is that we aren't starting from scratch. You know, you've just heard uh, that there's a little bit of history. There was a, a big effort that took place in 2016 with the balance plan. And with that balance plan and other ongoing efforts, there's a this running list that you see here are some potential park features that um, have moved forward and that these are opportunities for us to now finally take a closer look and see how they could be implemented in Pepper Park and the expansion of Pepper Park. So some of these items include expanding the playground and water features, um, adding or in, you know, improving gathering spaces such as group picnic areas, a gazebo, a kiosk, um, expanding waterfront views and gathering spaces such as viewing decks, or perched beach areas like the one that currently exists over at you know Pier 32, and just ensuring that there's nice walkways that are facing um, you know the waterfront. We've just heard you know Mike just went over about circulation, but I think there's opportunities to ensure that circulation is also improved within Pepper Park itself. There's been uh, talks about making sure that there's some form of outdoor plaza spaces for um, whether it's food trucks or even like shipping container converted um, uh, venues that, uh, that can have food and drink or opportunities for to have rotating exhibitions that can support special events. Um, we've the city has worked on exploring the idea of relocating Granger Music Hall and having that be part of a bigger outdoor music performance space. We've discussed. And, and the topic of special events and that we want to make sure that Pepper Park can serve the local national city community for special events here. And there's been talks about even having a dedicated special event center that would complement potentially the Granger Hall. And lastly, you know, part of the previous planning features is the, we want to communicate that the boat launch and the boat parking uh, will remain that that is an integral part of Pepper Park itself. Great. And we have one final poll uh, for everybody tonight. And you just heard a little bit of the history uh, of Pepper Park and the National City Waterfront. So we just, we wanna launch one more poll and really 
ask whether you have participated in a previous workshop related to Prepper Park or the balance plan, and you can just select yes or no. And Jesse, if you'll um, go ahead and watch this, uh, the poll. And we'll give people about 30 seconds uh, to answer. Thank you, everybody. Jesse, let's go ahead and close the poll. And we, the results are in. So about 24% of the attendees here tonight have participated in some form or fashion regarding um, Pepper Park of the Balance Plan, and about 75% have not. So we have a mix of uh, people familiar with the site and those that um, are relatively new to the planning process of Pepper Park. So. Welcome back, those who have participated, and I'll welcome to those uh, new to the process. Great. We are um, just about uh, to get ready to go into our breakout rooms too for the exciting part of this uh, process. But what I'm going to do, I want to start um, getting everybody excited with some of the ideas and topics that we're going to be talking to you all about. So I have a set of images that I'm about to share with everybody right now. And hopefully, it sounds like everybody's really already engaged and excited to start talking to all of us, but here are a set of pictures um, to help those who maybe are not quite um, you know, there yet. And I wanna begin with the well-being and active improvements. These are things that uh, we wanna talk to you about that, re are, that involve playing on or exercising with. We have the topic of passive water experiences. So that is all about how we experience the water. There's a topic about event support improvement. So the things we can do, the special events that can take place here in Pepper Park. The, uh, we wanna hear about educational opportunities and improvements. And this is about learning from the history and the environment of the site. And lastly, we wanna hear thoughts on access improvement. So it's about the journey um, to Pepper Park and the waterfront. So under well-being improvements, things that each of your team leaders in the breakout rooms will be talking to you about are, you know, how much of the grassy areas do we preserve or do we keep within the existing proper park and the expansion? We know we have a nice playground that it gets heavily used currently right now, but we, we have identified an opportunity to maybe expand it and make sure that there's appropriate playground structures for, you know, appropriate ages. So it could be, you know, an additional playground structure that for like a smaller group of kids and one for like a bigger group of kids. We've heard loud and clear in previous workshops that a splash pad or a, a water feature um, would be something really fun and exciting that for the community. Waterfront promenade, a promenade that can not only provide views and access for, to the water, but it can also double as circulation for walking and jogging. And lastly, we wanna hear your thoughts about Flex, flexible spaces. So again, grassy areas that would allow for whether it's Zumba or yoga or any type of, you know, Tai Chi type of exercise um, programs that could take place here at Pepper Park. For passive water experiences, there are some really fun images here um, that we, want, we wanted to share with you. The Perch Beach that you see on the top left corner, that's at Pier 32, just, just a seven, 10 minute walk from Pepper Park. So it's an idea of creating a beach and, and having that experience um, over at Purple Park with sand. We, we want to hear whether having decks over the water uh, so we, you can really be above and floating over the water, if that's something that resonates with you. Um, some pretty, you know, simple um, but attractive waterfront seating um, that capitalizes on viewing out to the water. The bottom left image is step seating. This is a really popular idea that a lot of uh, waterfront parks uh, and areas around the country and the world are taking advantage of. It's a fun way to let people get closer to the water and be at the water's edge without you know, ex exactly being in the water. Similarly, the viewing decks that I mentioned earlier, uh, whether they're um, smaller for like wildlife viewing or for interpretive signage or just you know, some of those quieter moments that you may wanna have. And I am a big fan of lighting. I always say, do not underestimate the power of lighting in a public space. And so whether through thoughtful and artistic design, lighting can really change the experience for a person once the sun goes down. So we wanna hear your thoughts on lighting if that's something you're interested in. 
event supporting improvements. These are uh, some fun ideas. Mike mentioned the roundabout. So do we want to repurpose the roundabout and have a beautiful multi-purpose kiosk that just like we see in a lot of Latin American countries, my own parents met and fell in love in a kiosk in their hometown of Atoponirco and Jalisco. So, hey, maybe this is something we want to have available here at Pepper Park. If the kiosk doesn't resonate with you, you may want to share your ideas on a multi-purpose stage. These two pictures that you see right here are about buildings. Do we want to have multi-purpose buildings for food and drinks or for you know some type of small commercial um, setting uh, for a, a local business? Uh, festivals, you know, we have history of the Mariachi Festival taking place here in Pepper Park. So how do we plan appropriately so that we can host big types of events um, that are appropriate for Pepper Park and the national city community? And lastly, simply having group picnic areas where somebody can rent uh, for a birthday at Quinceanera or for some type of ceremony. Um, lab, and then um, building upon some of these past type, passive improvements, there's the educational component. So the first image, very straightforward, is are there different type of uh, topics about history that we can educate when people arrive at Pepper Park? Uh, we want to acknowledge and we want to ask people about um, indigenous peoples and the history. Again, Jamie and Anna, thank you for being here today. So we were excited to hear your thoughts on how do we tell history and tell the story and acknowledge indigenous peoples here at Pepper Park. Historic structures. This picture is from Liberty Station up in San Diego. Um, are, are, there's lots of history, especially with a working waterfront in, in the National City. So is there something that you think might be a cool idea to include here in, in Pepper Park? Educating people about the water and the natural environment can be done with viewing platforms. So there's this really fantastic image on the bottom left uh, where there's, there might be an opportunity to elevate people physically and look above and really see how what you know there could be some really beautiful views out into the wildlife refuge and the bay uh, let us know if that's something you're interested in lastly we have you know pavement we can use actual pavement that designs on a ground to tell a story to educate or simply as a form of art and lastly educational signage such as the one you see on the bottom right um, signage doesn't have to be boring it could be fun and unique like this to educate people on about flora and fauna uh, in, in a park the last topic that we'll talk about is, you know, access improvements. So anything related to parking, parking lots, fencing, um, active transportation, like secure bike storage at Pepper Park, um, improving local connections, you know, east, west, you know, under and through the Interstate 5 freeway, um, acknowledging that Pepper Park um, could be, it is a pit stop for some of these regional connections, especially if you're uh, going along on the Bayshore Parkway. So as you can see, there's lots we can talk about in today's um, breakout room. So I'm really excited and I'm looking forward to hearing your ideas. I want to remind uh, everybody that once we get into our breakout room, uh, feel free to turn on your camera. I am noticing that lots of people have their cameras on. Uh, so that's great. Uh, that will let people like myself and the other team moderators um, help answer questions and call on people. Physically raise your hand if possible so that we can make sure that everybody has a chance to um, voice um, and share their feedback. Um, be respectful of people's feedback. Uh, we may not all be on the same page of what we want to see at Pepper Park. Uh, so that, let's just be mindful of each other's um, thoughts and, and ideas. If you happen to be in a noisy environment, feel free to mute yourself and then unmute yourself when you're speaking. And lastly, I'm seeing that the chat window is very active, very engaged. So if you have, if you want to just type your comments rather than say it out loud, you're more than welcome uh, to use the chat window function. And so now I'm going to take a quick pause. And what we're going to do is ensure that um, our IT team has been working in the background, getting everybody ready and to go into their breakout rooms. And there might be a few moments, um, so you know, bear with us. And in about a minute, we're going to launch the breakout rooms, and you're going to be teleported and into your room. Those that are in here joining us tonight for the Tagalog interpretation, you will you will stay here in the main room, so you can sit back and just wait uh, for your turn. Everybody else, including the Spanish speakers, we are in three and two other English breakout rooms uh, will be uh, will be created. So. Uh, Jesse, I'm giving you the green light. Uh, as soon as you're ready, uh, you can uh, launch. But in, in a moment, before I forget, if everybody has their cameras on right now, Commissioner Naranjo wanted to make sure if everybody can like raise their hands, smile, we're going to take a quick screenshot. 
and I'm gonna cycle through. I have five pages to cycle through because it is a complete, um, a, a packed room. So on the count of three, we'll do one, two, Great, I'm gonna do it four more times, bear with me. One more time and great. You're probably hearing the camera click. One, two, and three. Great. One, two, and three. And one more screenshot. Thank you everybody for your patience. This is great, we wanna make sure that we I have a recording of the full house today. There we go, Commissioner Naranjo. We have our screenshots of tonight's participants. Great. So um, at this point, now that we have our we have taken our pictures, we will um, Jesse feel free to launch the breakout rooms as soon as you're ready. And if you're put into an incorrect room, let us know and we can change you and make sure you're in the right room. Thank you so much, everybody. I look forward to speaking with you all in a few moments. You'll see the click, so go ahead and click join. So if everyone wants to make sure that their camera is on, uh, this is the main room and uh, you can mute or unmute yourself, but we would like to see raised hands uh, where possible. Um, I'm also gonna sh show at least uh, one element here. The pictures again is a good way to kind of walk through. Is everyone seeing those pictures at this point? Maybe just give me a thumbs, thumbs up, okay. So um, let me go back to the beginning of those pictures. This, these are the categories that Jacob went over. Uh, the first one being well, well-being active improvements. What I'd like to maybe try to do, and I don't know if um, Ryan, if you can um, kind of toggle through all of these the galleries and maybe see how many people are raising their hands on certain things. I kind of like to have open discussion, but also like a quick overview of the things that are on here um, as a way of kind of recording what your opinions are of what can happen in the park. So um, maybe just by a raise of hands, how important are open grassy areas for you? And Ryan, if you can kind of count those, I'll try to watch. So it looks like about um, five there. Ryan, do you actually have your yep. off of mute? Does that seem about the right number, Ryan? Yeah, there's quite a few people that aren't sharing screens, but yeah. Okay, and this is not an official poll, yep. but just kind of trying to get an idea of what people are most can um, want to make sure is included in their playgrounds themselves. You have a playground there, but it certainly can be expanded in different ages. So hands-on uh, playgrounds, how important is that to you? It's like um, slightly higher percent, but it depends on whether or not kid, uh, people have kids and family members. It's usually the biggest determining factor on how important playgrounds are. Got about eight, eight or nine. Okay, and how about the splash pad? I, I know it's been popular in the past. What do people think about the splash pad? Oh, well, less hands than I would expect it on that one because it's been a very popular idea in the past. About the same eight or nine, would you say? And the waterfront promenade itself is really just getting a little bit closer to the edge, whether that's overhangs or actually getting your foot in the water. How important is that to folks on, on the call? Raise your hands again. Okay. Uh, walking and jogging path, of course, there's already walking surfaces there, but maybe some expansion of those or it, certainly into the new areas of the park they can be added to. Is that an important aspect for people that are on the call? And the head shaking that I see that Ray's doing, that counts as a raised hand. He was shaking his head like that, so that must mean yes. <laughs> Same thing with you, Donald. <laughs> 
And then just uh, flex spaces, which really mostly means either a hard court or a soft surface grass area where different activities can occur, mostly oriented towards exercise on this one. So how about on that one? Okay, so now, now's the time for people to raise their hand if they wanna add something to this list under the category of well-being, active improvements. That are, again, mostly about healthy activities and exercise. So if anyone wants to raise their hand and unmute themselves and kind of bring up some ideas and Ryan will get those typed down in the notes. Looks like uh, Francis has her hand up. Go, uh, go ahead and unmute yourself. And Donna, we'll get to you on that one. I'm, I'm not sure if Francis uh, was having a difficult time in unmuting. Let me go back then to her. Well, let's try uh, Desiree Santos. Hello. Has her hand up. Is this Desiree or is it Rachel? Yes, it's Desiree. Okay, if you go ahead and add, add uh, any comments to this category. I would like to add a, um, like a lifting, not exactly a lifting weight area, but in some community parks, I've noticed that they have like a work a outdoor working out area for like calisthenics and things like that. I think that would be just amazing. That's quite popular these days in parks. They're non electrified, so they can be out in the weather, but they mm -hmm. use your own energy to help you get in shape more. How about another yes. hand? Uh, Jennifer, you want to add something? I was just a th thumbs up on that last one. Okay. And Donald, I know you had your hand up before. If you unmute yourself and jump in. You should have an unmute down at the bottom. And I can also ask you to unmute. You might see a message that comes up. There we go. Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, two things. I like what someone else said about the, um, hang on one second. <laughs> That's a new one. Start yeah, TV right. on. Uh, sorry about that. Somebody have a TV on. Uh, I like the fact that I said about the working out area in the uh, city I live in. They have workout areas for adults. It's kind of a really nice thing to have along with the playgrounds for the children. Mm -hmm. They can also work out. Okay. And number two, I'm, I'm a cyclist and a lot of cyclists start at that location, oh, yeah. bicycling either the, 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 uh, the Bay Area bikeway or mm -hmm. the Sweetwater, uh, um, sorry, called Sweetwater, Sweetwater River Basin. Basin. Yeah, exactly. So uh, in Coronado, they have some locations that have actually bicycle pumps for your bicycle, mm -hmm. and things for bicycles also too. A lot of bicycles start at that location. So that's what I, all I have to say. Great. And Francis, I know you were trying to ask something before, and uh, maybe if I ask you to unmute, maybe it'll work for you. Still didn't work. How about there? Are you seeing any message to unmute yourself? There okay. you go. I think we got it now. Thank you for that. Yeah, it wasn't allowing me to unmute. So I wanted to express my support for native plant landscaping and any type of you know habitat space that would be conducive to um, you know butterfly habitat and pollinators. And I just think that type of landscaping would um, really lend itself to some of these active improvement ideas. So yeah, just really interested in incorporating natural habitat wherever it's okay. feasible. Great, thanks. Any other hands? I'll try to keep scrolling through. Uh, Way, uh, Ray, Juarez. <clears throat> I keep sending a message to you to see if you can unmute, but. <clears throat> okay, yeah. can you hear me? Yep. Okay, uh, avid uh, bike runner, been doing that for like 30 years, uh, doing that whole bay run. And great, great stuff that's happening down there uh, along that bay shore, uh, really connecting with, uh, with Imperial Beach, Chula Vista, National City, San Diego, mm -hmm. seeing people from Mission Valley. I think this is awesome. Uh, one of the things uh, that I've, 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 I've mentioned before was the, uh, the lights, uh, especially along the Sweetwater uh, River. If, if there could be, and I know there's cer certain uh, different uh, jurisdictions that, 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 that are involved in this mm -hmm. so that they could start at least lighting up 
when it goes under those bridges, just some lighted area, because especially in the winter when it gets dark early, uh, just to have light, you can see further down a lot better. I think that that would be, and I like the air, air pump stations. That's excellent also. And I like to see some way that we could put, maybe put some signage to remind people of the basic protocols between pedestrian walking and bicycle walking. Mm -hmm. Because I think sometimes people don't understand that pedestrians do have the, uh, the right of way in the sense of bikes uh, need to, especially when you got a family with two little kids on the bikes, you got to pull over. You just got to slow down. You know what I mean? I mean, there's no, this is not a racetrack. It's, right. it's, it's an enjoyable, scenic and it's beautiful let me tell you i'm getting so many good pro uh, 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 responses from community from outside community and i would recommend people look at that youtube ted talks bicycles there's about five six uh, uh videos that are super good i don't know if you're familiar with ted talks yes. and they, <laughs> they really break it down as to why it's so important that we start to change our mentality from the all the time vehicle especially if you're going to 7-Eleven to get a gallon of milk, you don't need to get it in your car, you know what I mean? Kind of things like that. And how the benefits personally, communally, environmentally, and in my case, spiritually, because I really, <laughs> when I'm out there, I really love it, you know? But, uh, and I really get a lot of, um, lot of, lot of good feedback. So uh, Thanks, I'm just saying those things, what you guys are talking about, the air pump stations are great. And again, getting that word out there, because I'm starting to see a, a change as to even how the interaction between vehicles and, and, and bicycles. I think vehicles are starting to realize that, you know what, these guys are not going away. And you know what, I think it, I'm starting to see more positive interaction. And I also, uh, I-, I hey, Ray, like, we're, gonna, we're gonna need to move on because okay, we have a lot okay, of other folks okay, on okay. But thanks for your input. I'll get going if I don't get stopped. Uh, <laughs> but thank you, thank you very much. Thank, thank you for doing this. Cynthia, I unmuted you. So if anything you'd like to add on this first category? Thank you. Yes, my background is healthcare, nutrition. More, that space is directly connected to the waterfront. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the um, needs that we have in National City, particularly with the youth population, is regarding health and wellness have to do with nutrition. Mm -hmm. That space provides an ideal opportunity to connect our kids with the source of food that comes from the water. So in downtown San Diego, there's a lot of activities where the fishermen are selling direct uh, to uh, the locals. Um, and at their Saturday market, they do a lot of times have UCSD scientists uh, doing meet your meal, touch tank type things, or at least they did pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. So I think there's an opportunity to, particularly being right near the water, to use the spaces down there to connect our kids with uh, healthy foods, particularly those foods that come from the water. Great. Uh, Desiree, I know you had your hand up. Um, let me see if you can unmute yourself. There you go. I just have a quick question. It may be slightly off topic. Um, what will you do about the homeless population? I know that they are that there is a lot of them, especially downtown. And I do know that the police kind of move them around and do specific raids in different areas, but that doesn't really stop the migration. How would the park stay clean and just like safe and just like keep this investment that you're gonna be making? It, it's a challenging project for most uh, communities to be dealing with these days. It's challenging for park designers, but there's certain uh, what are called septed principles on how you make sure that you're designing the park to make sure it's visible and safe and, and uh, very apparent. Uh, certainly activation of a park always helps in uh, limiting the number of people that might be um, people staying there overnight, especially. So uh, there's a number of things to do, but um, we need to, uh, it's not an easy, easy task to take on. So um, let me go on to the next slide. We just, just have to keep kind of moving on this. So under the category of passive water experience uh, that has all these images that are on screen, uh, the idea of a perch beach, how does that sit with everyone? If you can raise your hands again, and Brian, if you can try to count those up quickly. So again, it's sand, you can't actually get in the water, but you feel like you're at the beach and at the water's edge, but you can't put your feet in the water itself. 
Okay, about how many did you get there, Ryan? I'm not seeing a lot of cameras on. I only got two, but I think there's a lot of cameras off right now. Yeah, again, it's not an official poll, but it kind of gives us some idea of what's important to folks. Deck over the water, which may be cantilevered over the water, so it feels like your you know, water's going underneath you slightly. How about that one? Is that an important one for folks? Okay. Uh, you already do have a fair amount of waterfront seating, but you can always have more. How about that as an important element for passive water experiences? And then the concept of the step seating, where you, again, you may not actually put your feet in the water, but you are coming down closer to the water and usually a place to kind of sit and look at. How about that one? <clears throat> Great. All right, so um, the viewing deck, I think those are pretty obvious uh, and unique lighting. Those are all great things along there. How about those two combined? Is that important to folks? Again, the head going like that, try to count those two, Ryan, when someone's shaking their head, thumbs, hands, or whatever it takes to get our attention. Okay, so uh, anyone want to uh, come off uh, line and add to this list of things that are at the edge of the water, but they're passive in the sense, not necessarily like swimming, but passive on how you interact with the water at the edge. So anyone, I know Desiree, did you want to ask a question again on that? Uh, I'll bring you up first since your hands up. Was was my votes being counted with my hand up for these selections? No, it's if you don't have your camera on, it's kind of hard oh, to tell. Okay. I don't know, Ryan, were you counting the hands that are up there as well? You know, if someone's raised their hand uh, for the regular to be, you know, like you see on Desiree's right now. Yeah, I saw a couple thumbs up. Let okay. me see if I can. We'll try to watch for that in the future. Anyone else want to add anything uh, to this category? Uh, any other ideas for us to consider? I know Desiree has that hand up again. So does that mean you want to add to what you just said, Desiree? No. OK, thank you. OK, um, did you see any other hand? Oh, Sherry, uh, if you'd like to, your hand's up, so. Yeah, the numbers for each of those categories were about the same. We we're running about five five people. OK. So Hi Sherry? there. Yep, can you hear me OK? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I saw you were talking about a perch beach. Mm -hmm. I would maybe strongly suggest not that. The uh, perch beach that you have actually displayed in this photo is where we live at Pier 32 Marina mm -hmm. and it becomes just a big cat box and it's pretty actually disgusting. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, imagine I don't, they may not all be cats. They may be dogs too, to be fair to both <laughs> pet species, but uh, yeah, it does require some maintenance from that standpoint. Any other comments on this category? Okay, and then let's go on to the event supporting improvements. So this is something that can handle a special event of some kind. Um, so it could be from the very large facility that could handle a lot of uh, larger events down on the waterfront. Uh, it could be something small like the kiosco or just even group of picnic areas. So let's say on the multi-purpose, you know, some people call it a bandstand, but a kiosco, how important would that be in the park to accommodate different special events? And Francis, I see your baby in the background raised his hand, so I don't know if that's uh, he or she. It's hard to tell from here, but <laughs> okay, it looks like a fair number of hands went up on that one. <clears throat> and then uh, multi-purpose stage uh, where you might have uh, played music, amplified music, or it doesn't necessarily have to be amplified music, but um, it, it, it can be. So how important is that one for everyone? <clears throat> You see a, a yes that popped up from David, so that's great. <clears throat> yeah, hands, thumbs, shaking your head, raising your hand, any of those things count as a, as a quick vote. Okay, and then uh, food and drink building where you could actually order something and uh, potentially eat there as well. <clears throat> Uh, the outdoor plaza space, you know, we have talked about even, you know, you can sometimes make some very interesting shapes out of uh, shipping containers and 
Pasha has a lot of them right next door, uh, but uh, it's something that you can be made with a deck on top and it can be made uh, to have, you know, some small outdoor spaces that are either on top of the building or next to a building. How important would that be for the waterfront? So maybe not quite as many hands on that one. <clears throat> Uh, festival space can be big open lawn areas. You just got to make sure that you can handle a larger uh, festival, such as the Marathi <laughs> Festival, which was is a problem. What's occurred to National City that they kind of ran out of capacity and lost that event. So with another two and a half acres, it could be maybe accommodated a little bit better as well. So how important is festival space where bigger events might occur? Hands up on that one. <clears throat> And then finally, on the um, group picnic areas, there are a number of them out there, but you could certainly infill with a lot more that can fit in the park itself. Is that an important asset and an amenity for anyone that's online right now? Okay, then at this point, uh, for anyone um, that wants to add to this list of uh, supporting events themselves, uh, now would be the time. It looks like Michelle maybe has her hand up. Were you able, there you go. No, sorry, that was just me raising my so hand. hand on. Okay, how about Cynthia, is that a new hand up? Yes, regular, uh, regularly scheduled events. And one of the things that uh, National City uh, has been lacking is farmer's market, fisherman's market, uh, something that regularly draws people down to the, the water with, um, a scheduled cyclical uh, regular event, also a uh, pop-up event uh, spaces for the uh, the businesses, food businesses uh, in uh, San Diego and National City, excuse me. Anyone else with additional uh, add-ons to this category? Looks like Damien. Hi, um, maybe, instead of doing uh, food and drink buildings, like actual infrastructure, maybe like uh, Cynthia was saying, uh, doing farmer's market, also inviting local um, food trucks to come out in those events. Mm -hmm. That could probably attract more people in that events as opposed to, you know, like the investment on an actual fixed structure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I wonder if a good spot for that is kind of like between the park and Pier 32. So you can pull people from both directions. <clears throat> okay. Any more on this topic? Yeah, and forgive me if I missed your miss uh, your hand going up for that, but we're gotta try to move along here too, so we don't get cut off on this last topic. Okay, educational improvements. It's mostly about signage, but it's also about the way you experience the environment and learn from it by looking at things. So. There's a broad range of elements that are on here. Let's just go right into, uh, is there any of them that are on this list that you see up there that particularly grab your attention you wanna comment on? Them? Now, Desiree, is that your hand up from before or would you like to comment on? I can only see the left two. Okay, well, I can maybe make it a little bit smaller. Does that work? Yeah, a little bit. I can see two and a half now. Okay. <laughs> Does I, anybody else have that issue or is it just me? Is that getting you there to all three rows? I see um, four now. Oh, really? Wow. It may just be me. I don't know. Maybe if someone else can say. I have a small screen. <laughs> okay, it's me. Okay, uh, Jennifer? Yeah. Um, I was just thinking, you have a nice structure already there, like that is attractive uh, by the waterfront, but those, the signages for education, like I don't, I see like your posters on the first one. Is that what you're saying, like posters? That, we usually call them interpretive panels that, that go up. That's a permanent panel that stays in place and it picks a topic to explain. 
Uh, most people don't realize the actual rich history that this whole waterfront actually had and how much it's changed from when the original wharf was built. Um, it, it, there's, it's gone through a lot. And, and even the lagoon is not where the original lagoon was. And none of this is, is, uh, goes back completely <laughs> except for the original wharf. So there's a lot of stories to be told and they can be from cultural uh, going back, especially with Native Americans, they can be more recent history. They can be about wildlife, all those things. So I, I was thinking as far as for children, interactive, more interactive style, educational um, experiences would be nice. Yes, that's, that's a great point to make out. It's not just a static sign. It can be interactive and kinetic as well. So, okay. Um, let's see. Cynthia, did you want to add something else to this? Okay. And a number of waterfront areas, they have underwater cameras that are out there being able to um, bring the bring what's under the water to the folks who are actually at the waterfront sure. uh, for educational uh, purposes. Mm -hmm. I think that's something that might be highly educational, particularly for our uh, younger uh, population here. And something like that could maybe happen on the floating dock where you somehow build onto that so people can gather around and see what's un underwater right there. Okay. Uh, Jennifer. Are, am I unmuted? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking when she was talking about that, are you, do you have plants or I, I, in the past you had a building that people would sometimes you would have people come in to learn about things. Is that building still going to be? Talking, are we talking about the aquatic center? The, the I think so. Center? Yeah. Because okay. like you know, a lot of places have interpretive, what are called like interpretive centers, yeah, where they have like a lot of the educational, wow. where you would have cameras, where you would have um, signage that explains the history. It, have you thought about that? Like not like a museum, but kind. I don't know how to. It's like an interpretive center. Yeah. Have you thought about create is is the aquatic center used only for the aquatic things, or are you thinking is it possible to have another area for that educational style purpose? It could be built into a special event center as well. Uh, it could be part of a special event center. It could be more on the deck that overlooks the bay with maybe some shelter above it. Uh, there's a number of ways of doing that. Uh, also, Granger Hall is being, has been discussed in the past about moving down here. So you could have a music event center that could also be educational from uh, a perspective of, of music and, and the science behind music. So a lot, a lot of good ideas there. Okay. And uh, I know we only have three minutes left, so I'm going to go on to the last one here. And this is mostly about access. Could anyone uh, maybe explain if they feel that they have difficulty in getting down to, or maybe even if it's something like, maybe you'd like to walk down there once in a while, but are uncomfortable walking underneath I-5 um, and maybe just express your um, experiences and whether or not some time and attention needs to be put on getting there as well, or options to get there. So any hands up on that? Okay, Damien. Having problems un unmuting yourself there? Let me ask you to unmute yourself then. You should get a message there. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. um, hi. Um, actually, we just moved to National City. We've been here for about five months. The only way we've been able to get there is through car. Mm -hmm. um, and even getting there by car was kind of scary coming from like a city kind of couple we i mean we, i mean san diego city we never had to like actually get into our cars so i i really do like all the images here shown as access improvements i think uh active terms of tra active transportation improvements are are definitely a must um i'm not so so much of a fan for parking lot improvements especially since car sales are reducing by the year mm -hmm. um i and then um, one one thing I wanted to ask was like if if I'm on the east side of the Walmart Supercenter, how would I access there through bike or walking? 
Uh, well, it's really coming down to um, Mila Cars and Bay Marina Drive is really the only thing that gets under I-5. There is 19th Street as well that you can get under the bridge in that location. Um, so that's that's really the two primary ones. I guess I'd also like to ask a question. If there was a pedestrian bridge that was built over, one that was actually able to be uh, handle a bike as well as pedestrians that came over from the 24th Street trolley station and dropped down onto the empty lots there right where the Bayshore Bikeway is, would, would that be something that you would feel could uh, really improve access to it? And would people actually walk that? So maybe just a, a raise of hands would be interesting to hear if people would do something like that. I mean, they're not cheap to do, but you know, there is there is money potentially these days uh, for infrastructure that it could be at least explored. So I only saw like two or three hands up on that one. So just to make sure we get an accurate kind of count on that. Okay. Okay, any other categories of things that uh, you'd like to add to this? Because I know we're gonna be bumped out of here or actually we're gonna Directed. be joined by everyone else, so. Just at the site with access, uh, going back to uh, vehicles being discouraged, I think uh, cars in particular is a good thing, but we also need to think about more electric vehicles, electric bikes, uh, things like that, and making sure that uh, there are charging stations and uh, that are available uh, too for alternative uh, fuel vehicles. Great, okay. Okay, I, um, let's see, uh, Damien again. Hello, Mike. We're all coming back to the main room. Okay, oh. then we'll stop. Ryan, you if so you much. could uh, email me uh, your notes, sir, that would help me in, in setting up the briefing. So could you send it to mike at ktua.com? Yeah, I'll send it over, Mike. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Can you go ahead and stop sharing your screen, Mike? That way yeah. I'll be ready to... Uh, we can start getting to our deep breath. There you go. I'd like to remind everybody to ensure that they are in the proper language channel. Uh, so if you were, if you had selected Tagalog or Spanish, um, please go ahead and do so, so that the interpretation can continue uh, accordingly. And we'll wait about a minute before. I kick off the debrief. We had some great conversations in my room and it sounds like everybody was busy um, sharing their ideas as well in the other rooms. And please continue sharing any ideas and thoughts into the chat window. The chat will be downloaded and it'll be part of our summary that we'll be putting together. So um, feel free to continue adding notes into the chat. Hello, Juan Jorge, welcome back. Hopefully y'all had a good conversation in your room. I see Steven and Leslie, you're all back, great. Thank yeah, you. great conversations, really good comments. Okay, we'll just, I'll wait a couple more seconds and before we start the debrief. Juan, can you give me a thumbs up? Are you correct? Are you hearing the interpretation successfully? Yes, thank you. Again, friendly reminder, please feel free to continue adding your ideas in the chat. That will all get recorded. Great. Well, Anna, um, you were my note taker. I have a good list. I was taking some of, I was writing down like some of the important things that since it seems like our room was having contestants on. So I will, I will do my debrief. And if there's anything you'd like to add, feel free to interject. And then, so I will kick off the debrief and then that will, we will follow um, Mike. You will go after me. Then we'll go to Juan and Steven. Uh, you, you'll close out our debrief um, right after Juan. So. 
Great. So we yeah. uh, thank you everybody who was in my room. I really appreciated it, all of the feedback. I think there, there was a lot of consensus actually in my room with some of the ideas that um, people would like to see for the future of Pepper Park. The main, uh, one of the main items that we talked about was the open space. And so the idea of maybe not over programming it, making sure that there's opportunity for a nice passive open space uh, would go, would be something important. Um, and related to open space is parking, you know, ensuring that we take a really close look at exactly how much parking is needed so that it doesn't take over the opportunity for there to be more park open space. So I think there was a good consensus in, in that in our room regarding that. Um, we heard a lot about the family being family oriented and making sure that design features such as playgrounds or other interactive elements are really geared uh, towards youth, family, because we know lots of families use Pepper Park. And so they want my group wanted to make sure that that continues as a, as a focal point for, for the expansion. Related to that, there's a commentary about, I, I thought it was really special that somebody mentioned that you think, let's make it feel like home, that it's that it's National Cities Park here on the waterfront. So I think that's a very um, a special um, comment that I think um, resonated with, um, with my group. Uh, we had uh, uh, an attendee who who really appreciated the waterfront, but is there, they asked, is there an opportunity to introduce water into the park as well? So I think there's some really great potential elements with that and that can be connected with education, um, with um, maybe interaction, but not only viewing the water at the water's edge, but also potentially bringing it into the park itself. So we're gonna definitely, uh, I think we're definitely going to explore that element. There's in, in our chat and in commentary, we heard about inclusive play, accessibility, and also not only physically, but also about sensory. And, you know, there are, um, you know, people who are, you know, who, whether it's through smell or sound or just the ability to be outside in nature and how, and we all know the studies about <laughs> how nature really um, has some really positive effects on, on, our, on our bodies and our minds. And so I think there was a good consensus about just making sure that we're diverse and inclusive and equitable in the type of experiences that uh, are provided here in Pepper Park. A great, I think, commentary and consensus on acknowledging and bringing in indigenous history, indigenous people's history, whether it's through the planting itself, um, the art, uh, signage, even events. I think there's there's no question in doubt that we want to expand on that and ensure that it's part of the storytelling here at Pepper Park. And uh, one last comment was about timeline and budget. A couple of people in my group said, what is the timeline? You know, they, they, they hope that communication continues being transparent and about, you know, setting expectations and ensuring that um, things get built in a timely manner. Um, so thank you so much for everybody in my group. Hopefully I did you justice in kind of highlighting the, the main elements. Um, Anna, is there anything else that you think I missed that you wanted to share? I was just going to add also, because I heard it from um, a couple of folks about having food options, um, snacks, or for, for a for be snacks for um, a cyclist moving through the area um, or people that are at the park and um, especially healthy snacks or food options in the area. That's right. Thank you for catching that, Anna. Great, well, I'm going to pass it on to Mike Singleton. Thank you to my group. Thank you so much. Um, I'll let Mike uh, take over now for his debrief. Great, thanks, Jacob. Um, so we, we actually uh, went through and had people raise hands on each of the items as well. So we can get an idea where the existing photos that we were using, how popular they were. So the promenade and the outdoor workout area was pretty important um, in that outdoor work, uh, workout area. Yeah. Makes sense to be next to um, the playgrounds as well. So you can kind of watch over on kids that way. Um, the splash pad was highly rated. Uh, bike facilities and amenities, two people pointed out how uh, a lot of rides start and end here and or stopovers there along the rest of the Bayshore Drive itself. Uh, so facilities like uh, pump, air pump stations and uh, good lighting, especially at nighttime uh, when people use those facilities. Nutrition, uh, the connection here, you know, it's well-being, so it's about good nutrition and connecting the idea of being down in this park that might be related to the bay and, and uh, uh, water from that particular standpoint. Um, under the passive water experiences, um, uh, the Perch Beach didn't uh, was pointed out that they, someone that lives down in that area, that it's um, kind of like a cat box a lot of the time. So you're never quite sure what you're stepping through. 
And so maintenance would be a big issue on that one. Uh, farmer's market, uh, potentially as a waterfront oriented uh, use. Also the idea of um, potentially food trucks instead of just fixed structures themselves. Um, Multi-purpose uh, kiosco was very popular. Um, the festival space was an important thing uh, for people. Again, this food and drink was brought up under this topic, but um, pointing out again, maybe food trucks. And maybe food trucks that might be uh, somewhere between the marina and uh, the park itself to be able to pull from both directions on that. Under the educational one, just the idea of an interpretive center or at least an interpretive deck or an overhead structure where you might have something a little bit more than just signage. Also the idea that, you know, kinetics and making things physical that people could actually talk through and, and learn from, especially kids can be uh, in that center as well. Under the access, it was really about, uh, you know, it's really kind of difficult to get down here other than by car. So people, and we even, I floated the question of a pedestrian bridge that goes over I-5, how many people would actually use that? It's about maybe a third definitely raised their hand on it, but um, everyone knows that they're kind of expensive. Um, but the idea of having more car parking wasn't popular with a couple of people saying, well, we already got enough parking there. We got to encourage people to come down here in other methods as well. So that's kind of the main highlights on the ones are obviously we can't really hit on all the topics and we try to capture them, but we do have it down in our notes. And certainly if you added uh, to the chat box, those are all captured as well. So thanks everyone on our um, breakout group. I appreciate your input. Thank you, Mike. Sounds like there were some overlapping ideas between your room as well. Let's go on to Juan. Go ahead and unmute yourself and uh, let us know what uh, the conversations you had in your room. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so one of the main concerns or one of the main things that we're talking in our group was the fact that the community wanted to see or the community wants to see more open green space. So there were concerns about some of the buildings that are being proposed, such as the community center, you know, because it, it, they might they might already be taking too much space of that new open space. So that was one of the one of the main concerns. Um, another one is improved access to the park and ensure that parking, um, especially parking fees, are reasonably priced. Because uh, even though actually, you know, right now the parking is free during events, they charge for it, and it can be really expensive. So that kind of uh, doesn't allow for a lot of people to be able to drive there because they, they cannot afford the parking. So just keep it reasonably priced and also ensure to provide things such as bike parking to also kind of incentivize the use of bicycles. They also really like the idea of installing, of having educational components and signage as well as art throughout the park because uh, they consider that it, it will make the, the whole promenade more interesting. Um, and one thing that they were very uh, interested in is being able to participate participate in the, the, the art making process because they've done it before for other projects in National City. And this will really create this sense of owner, ownership of the park because the community will be involved and, you know, and throughout the whole process. Uh, we also talk about consider installing lighting, but solar lighting to increase the sense of safety, especially at night and the afternoon, but while also remaining environmentally friendly. Um, yeah, and also, you know, they like the idea of probably having some sort of snack bar or things where people can purchase food, but a lot of the times these areas tend to sell uh, some of the products, they, they tend to be really expensive. So that also kind of doesn't allow people to, to purchase them when they're at the park. So it's something that should definitely be kept in mind. And lastly, uh, I guess one of the, there was this question that we all had, like they, they want to know if, if the proposed buildings again, such as the community centers, are they already going to be built or they're still in like the, like the planning phase? So that was just one of the questions flash concerns that the group had. Great, thank you, Juan. I think that's one of the general comments that I'll be able to uh, address at, at the ending of the workshop. 
Uh, so thank you, Juan, Jorge, and your, your group for all that commentary. We appreciate it. Yeah. And lastly, Stephen, let's go to you and, and Leslie. What were the highlights of your conversation? Great. Yeah, thanks. Uh, it was a really good conversation. Uh, lots of great, thoughtful comments. So I appreciate everyone who um, spoke. And um, as Mike was mentioning, I can't necessarily cover them all in this uh, debrief, but I'll go over some of the main major ones. And uh, Leslie did a great job of noting these all down. So we, we have everyone's comments. Um, so one of the one of the I have two people comment that they really wanted to see a community garden out in the in the park and just kind of focusing on some of the educational pieces of that too. Um, so that's definitely um, uh, something that people would like to see. There were a number of comments relating to parking, in particular the uh, boat parking, um, wanting to make sure that the parking is preserved and that there is enough parking for those who are bringing boats into the area. Uh, but there are also comments on just the balance of parking versus um, other use types and other uh, different types of users. So not just uh, looking out for the boat parking only, but also for others. Um, and there are also some thoughts about um, the fact that the the area in the park is limited. And when we bring in new uses that may bring more people, so the need for maybe additional parking and possibly um, thinking about a drop-off area for uh, other types of ride sharing or uh, um, other users and other ways of getting to the park. Um, there was also a thought that maybe a survey could be conducted to see um, how many how many of the spaces for the boat parking are being used on a regular basis so we can kind of get a better feel for that. Uh, there are also a lot of comments relating to um, connectivity and the fact that Pepper Park feels very isolated and just wanting to improve that connectivity um, for, for bikers that are using the Bayshore Bikeway, wanting to provide that direct access to the park, even thinking about uh, maybe providing some access through the uh, wetland areas using elevated walkways with limited impacts just to provide better access for bikers and pedestrians and other people who want to get to the park. Um, let me see, I'm kind of looking through some of these other ones. Uh, we also had some comments about uh, water features. So there was a comment about including a fountain, a musical fountain that could be useful for multi-generational users. So that kind of uh, being inclusive of different age groups and uh, bringing in some water to the park. And there were several comments on the need for a beach or some type of access to the water and the just out there is not um, any anything like that for National City and just wanting to see that happen. Uh, the boat ferry idea was very well looked upon, and that's definitely something that people are excited about. Um, there are some comments about the kiosco idea and just liking that and thinking that that could really bring some life and activity with performances into the park and keeping some grassy areas for multi-use uh, types of uses like dancing or picnicking and those sorts of things. Um, and uh, also several comments about the, the kumiai and uh, recognizing indigenous communities in the park, maybe even having a name for the park that recognizes um, the Kumeyaay and uh, indigenous people. So um, thoughts about that and how we can recognize that in the park. So those are some of the um, some of the highlights. I think that's most of the major ones. And then again, haven't captured everything, but yeah. Great. Thank you so much, Stephen and Leslie for, for your group. I think there is, what I'm hearing that there's a lot of overlap and there are some uh, ideas, I think, that as the team, as we get closer into actually looking at the actual designs, we're going to really have to consider and take a close look at. So there, I think it's a really exciting time right now that between the Port of San Diego and National City that we're here at this moment to really try to envision the future of Pepper Park. And um, I think we can walk away, at least from today's workshop, with lots of over, overlapping ideas um, from the things we heard today. So again, a shout out to everybody who participated today. I'm gonna to go ahead and share my screen one last time. And so that you can see, um, I have one more slide that shows contact information. And it's just a couple of things about next steps. Okay. Well, part of um, our responsibility is to go ahead and share a summary report of the chat of the conversations that took place in the breakout rooms. And that's something that will be posted uh, to the Port of San Diego website that's been created specifically for National City. Um, on this website that you see here is, uh, we are gonna be con continuously updating uh, it with more information. So here we'll post a summary 
And we also have a, a link that you can all click on to sign up for newsletter. So that way you can stay in touch of all upcoming announcements or when we post something new. And so uh, please stay tuned over the next month, a month and a half when we get um, new information up on, on this website itself. We have um, Anna who was in my group. She is the project manager on the Port of San Diego side of things. And her contact information is, is listed below right here. So you're, she's welcoming emails and phone calls uh, when uh, there's new commentary um, that comes up. So I'm going to check the chat. And great. So I'm just going to do a quick review of the chat to see if I can identify a, a general comment. And I think I'll start off by just saying that the, regarding structures and buildings, all of everything is still in planning phases. Nothing is set in stone yet. And so I think that's part of the, the design process with this Parker Park expansion to see what is possible, feasible, and making sure that it reflects the, 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 the wants and needs of the community. And we're seeing a good confirmation. We're seeing um, ideas about the kiosco. We're seeing things about native gardens and native plantings, educational components. So I'm seeing just a lot of great ideas. Um, some ideas about active transportation, having bike stations um, uh, that could be available at Pier 32 or Pepper Park. So once again, we are gonna be saving the chat itself and that'll be part of the log and part of the report out. There's some really great ideas in here that uh, our design team will, will take home and, and start putting pen to paper and figuring out um, what exactly the, the future of Pepper Park will be. So I would like to, at this point, um, call out Commissioner Naranjo. Um, if you would, um, I know the mayor earlier had some welcoming remarks, but if, I'll give you the opportunity right now uh, to just um, kind of just close out tonight's workshop, if, if you're comfortable with that. Yeah, I do. Thank you, Jacob. First of all, thank you, all of you, every single one of you for giving up your hour and a half on a Thursday evening to be here. Your opinion matters. And this is our space. And so I want to make sure that you are stay active, you get on our email list, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. I'm happy to do a one-on-one -on -one with you, but please stay involved and stay active because the success of this project relies on all of us. And so we need you. So please stay involved, stay active, track the Port of San Diego. You can always go on our website, portofsandiego.org. And there's my email address and happy to support. And thank you all. Thank you, Commissioner. We appreciate it. So if anybody has any last comments, feel free to throw them in, into the chat right now. If not, you are welcome to get to dinner, enjoy your night, get back to your families and loved ones, and we'll hope to see you all soon again. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you all.